Welcome to Dennis Eagle in Merthyr in South Wales, Great Britain. I'm here today with Simon and Andy, and we're here to talk a little bit about some modern Dennis Eagle history and really how we um, evolved from this style of very conventional products as it was in the 1980s through to what was our revolutionary Elite 1 in 92 and then the latest Euro 6 Elite and ProView in 2023. Put these vehicles into context. Jeff, can you tell us a bit about the history of the company and the journey that it's made with the Elite? Yeah, well, certainly the recent history is interesting. So, um, up until the mid 80s, we had Hester Dennis producing chassis in Guildford and Hester Eagle in Warwick, and there were two independent companies. Um, in 1985, the companies came together and formed Dennis Eagle, and that's really where this um, journey of product evolution really started. Um, so the product we were originally building back in 1985 was the Delta um, and we've got a picture actually here of, um, from 1985 with a picture of the workforce and it's the model that preceded the one that we've got outside. In 1988 we facelifted that model um, and that was really just to keep us going until we could get the next generation of product. So what would the scale of the operation have been in those days? Well, I think we're doing about 350, something like that. So probably a third of the size of the output now. Um, the, the chassis product, which was the Delta, which we'll go and have a look at in more detail, it was starting to look quite dated in the mid 80s. Um, and I think to retain market share, had we not done something dramatic with the chassis product, um, certainly by the late 80s, I think we'd have probably been just a bodybuilding company by now. So it was quite a crucial um, situation and I was actually an apprentice at the time and I remember Elite going on the drawing board um, for the first time in about 1989 and we've actually got the original concept of the Elite there yeah and yeah. remarkably it hasn't actually changed that much yeah um, from yeah. there so that was developed from about 1989 um, to its launch in 92 um, but yeah remarkable really it still yeah. looks very much like the, the very product familiar. you see today isn't it yeah so I think these drawings, Simon, are amazing. So that's the original concept of the municipal cab. And you can see that the highlights, the Dennis, you know, it's still very familiar, isn't it? The A pillars, yeah. you know, just very, very similar in terms yeah. of um, design. That was the derivative for the fire appliance. So you can see that we then had a concept of moving the cab further back. And finally, that is actually the high performance fire engine, which was the rapier. Yeah. Um, and believe it or not, I had a a 0 to 60 um, performance of 16 seconds, so um, quite remarkable yeah. for a truck of its day. So we'll pop outside, I think we'll start by looking at the Delta. Um, it won't go as fast as um, the 0 to 60 rapier, but um, we'll, um, we'll put it on the road and yeah. see how it compares to today. Excellent. <laughs> So we built this truck in 1988. Talk us through the, the technology of the day. So this truck uh, built in 1988, uh, drum brakes all around. It's pre-ABS. Um, we've got a Perkins Phaser 180 engine in it. Um, so it was pre-Euro 1? This is pre-Euro 1, yeah. That wasn't introduced until 93. And we've got a mountain of steps to get up into the cab. And in terms of... Um Comfort, I mean, it was a really good utilitarian product, wasn't it? But nothing like the comfort of today's product, is it? That's correct, yeah. And there was no need for any seat belts for anybody either back no. then. In fact, seat belts didn't come in until, was it, 89? Yeah, something like that. And then it wasn't a legal requirement to wear them either. Yeah. So, of course, believe it or not, this was actually the facelifted vehicle, wasn't it? So this is an entire new dashboard in 1988. It is, yeah. Yeah, but we still got the six-speed manual gearbox. Look at the size of that baby. But in terms of effort to drive, I mean, it was really, truly quite a thing to drive, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Compared went, to 
Ended up with leg ache at the end of the day, and I mean, look at the uh, the instrument cluster with the manual gauges. Yeah. They had physical air supply going to them, oil pressure going to them. Amazing, really, where we've come from and, and yeah. where we are now. But having said that, ergonomically, it is actually quite a good layout, isn't it? It's, it's a very good layout, mm -hmm. yeah. It's driver friendly, um, nice piece of kit, and, and good for its day. So just to touch on bodywork a bit, Andy, this was the Phoenix, which rescued the company, really. It was launched in 1979, and this body was designed um, for a bag-loading nation, so we hadn't done any containerization by then. So if you have a look at the tailgate, it's 2.8 cubic metre size tailgate, and the idea was that this was hand-loaded with rubbish. You couldn't choke the bin, you couldn't choke the hopper. It was just um, built for bag-loading. Bag and of course, by the time we got into the late 80s, containerization was coming into the UK, and that forced a different design in body. And we'll show you that when we look at the, uh, the middle vehicle, which is the, um, the Elite One with the Phoenix 2 body. So the other thing that really started changing in the 80s was a much more awareness for safety, wasn't it? And, and legislation started to come in. So just talk us through that a little bit, Andy. Yeah, so we had the introduction of PM52, Jeff. We had the need to simultaneously press these buttons in to lower the tailgate from this point here. So you could see if there was anybody in that area to, there. Prior to that, we were on levers at the valve block at the front. Yeah, and they were literally was, on the valves, weren't they? They were. You physically moved the lever, yes. Yeah. It, it could be very dangerous. Yeah. So as much as I enjoy driving this truck, it's a novelty for me. Um, and I think you've got to sort of think, if you're driving this eight hours a day, every day, the noise, the emissions, um, the rattling, the effort of the manual gearbox, it would all be very, very tiring. And you'll see that as we, uh, as we take off. It's a, it's a vehicle that takes some physicality to drive um, and the other thing is it's only a partly single mesh gearbox so you can see as we start to pick up speed it really is noisy I mean I'm having to raise my voice to um, talk over the engine you want to see all the traffic behind us so my comfort with this seat isn't actually too bad, but um, the cruise seat, they've got no suspended seats. It literally is just sitting on a bench on the back of the cab. But the driving position's pretty good. Um, as I say, the aesthetics are good. So Simon and I spoke earlier about the um, original concept of Elite and that was what we shared in terms of that first drawing. Um, this is a really interesting vehicle, we acquired this this year, so as most people know we renovated the Delta three years ago. This is actually a Mark I Elite that we've refurbished this year. It's one of the last um, of the range of the Mark I Elite, um, but as you can see really the um, the features of the original concept back in 1989 to what was actually launched in 1992 are just so um, so true to the original concept. So if we just walk around, the other thing that's interesting, it's also got um, our Phoenix 2 body. So this is the body that replaced the body we looked at earlier on on the BFI vehicle. And this was designed really with containerization and wheelie bins in mind. So if we walk towards the back, We've now got a 1.6 cubic metre hopper, so a much smaller hopper. It's much more designed for efficiency running binless and wheeled bins. Um, and this was really what um, was a whole change of concept in the late 80s in terms of wheeled bins. So really we did a couple of things that were quite important um, at that, in that light, late 1980s. One was um, a concept for a chassis that's kept us going till 2023 and also a new body that uh, coincided with containerization. So just coming back round to the, uh, the front of the vehicle again. 
And uh, these are the original design features that we've talked about right the way through this film. Single step, flat floor, high visibility, and that concept from Elite from 1992 is, is, is as current as it is today right the way through to 2023. This vehicle was built in 2002 and it's only really come out of service this year so it's pretty much worked for over 20 years. Um, but just sitting in the cab, what, what, what can you see in terms of uh, what's your thoughts? It's easily more comfortable straight away, it's brighter, it's clearer, um, much easier getting in and out as well. Yeah, I mean from the driver's position here, you've got the automatic gearbox, You've got the, all your dials are very easy to see. Switches are all in good locations. Everything's been thought about for the driver and, yeah. and for the loaders. And it really was radical, wasn't it? If you think it about this in 1992. It's an incredible change from the, the last truck we were in. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about the drive line? What, what have we got in here, Andy? In this, we've got a Euro 3 Cummins ISBE, 250 brake horsepower. So that Euro 3 came in in 2001. Uh, so that met, met the legislation required at the time. Got the Allison automatic gearbox, um, gone as the clutch, yep. none of that, and the gear stick that we saw earlier, all gone, so yeah, far better. We've also got disc brakes and ABS on this vehicle. Okay, so it was really starting to deal with safety and, and comfort, wasn't That's it, correct, in terms yeah. of that yeah. early concept? Yes. Riding a bike, you never forget. Here we are, we're bang up to date now with our latest Elite Plus European product. And we've been talking all morning, really, about how remarkably similar this is to the 1992 launch concept, isn't it, Andy? It is. The low entry, the all round good vision, comfort for the driver, comfort for the loaders, and a, a user friendly piece of kit. Yeah. Really good piece of kit. So, what other markets is the Elite focused on these days? We're mainly Europe, um, mainly the UK. We've got a, a dominant market share in the UK with this product. Um, we're also strong in Australia, so we do about 200 a year in Australia. Um, and as you know, we've now moved into America with the ProView. And it does feel very much like that early 90s, where we're building a concept of this product all over again in a new market. And it, it is very exciting, yeah. introducing this into the American, North American market. Yeah, there's so much to say really about the, the new interior of uh, Elite. I mean, just, well, just so much, isn't there? Yeah, very, very comfortable from the word go. Much lighter, quieter when we were driving up the road. Yeah, you look at the layout of the switches, everything's to hand. Automatic gearbox, piece of cake to use. Ergonomically, the instrument cluster and everything is really all in the right position. Everything's been thought about. Bottle holders down there for everybody. We've even got mood lighting. Mood lighting, yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? Mood lighting for a bin truck. And the technology in terms of safety is just like night and day, isn't it? I mean, just talk through some of the electronics there now. Yeah, so we've got uh, an autonomous emergency braking system on this, which consists of a camera at the front there and a radar. So if uh, you approach a vehicle too fast and the driver's not braking, it will automatically brake for you. Incredible. Um, electronic stability program as well, which looks after the suspension if you're going round corners too fast it will apply more air in one side apply the brakes accordingly very very clever piece of kit this is the pdm for the bodywork so you can make changes to the operational side of things here you can change the packing pressures you can change the number of cycles it does you can tip the vehicle safely from inside the cab but you can't lower it from in the cab jet so we've come a long way from levers on valve blocks haven't correct we, we have yeah and we've got an emergency stop switch here in the driver's and the loader's position in case anything goes wrong during the operation. And in terms of um, the journey from the 88 product right the way through to the early Elite, I mean, the, the comfort for the driver and crew is just on a different level. We've even got individual uh, crew seats now with individual seat belts, as you can see. 
Um, they're on a, a leg, so it's just totally different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, air suspended seat for the driver. It's treated as a workstation for everyone who's yeah. in it at the end of the day. So, so I think just gelling it together, those guiding design principles are totally evident, and they're just absolutely enhanced to um, you know as close to perfection as we can these days, aren't they? Yeah. So we've seen an evolution uh, between the, the original truck and this truck over 35 years. I just wonder what on earth we're going to be looking at in 10 years' time. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to come back and talk in 10 years' time and, and see what the yeah. differences are. Yeah. Um, certainly those of the markets will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. electrification, hydrogen, who knows where it will go. Yeah, and if the technology moves on in the next 35 years as quick as this, then, yeah, quite be quite remarkable. Yeah.